Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with the 14th, I believe, uh, episode of the Priest playthrough, Priest Legacy for Cultist Simulator. Um, now, as sort of indicated, I'm, uh, I am broke up the recordings in a few bits, so I'm going to need a minute to reacquaint myself. I know we've been going through the White Door lately, so I'm going to be needing more health than, uh, than Passion. And of course, Passion's been going into some of my paintings, although the smartest choice right now would be to... Uh, just cool it <clears throat> and let my um you know let my uh let my mystique wear down now uh, one of the things that this is accomplishing is that i'm going to be able to i'm going to be able to extend the life of this uh, erudition for a bit longer than expected and then um i mean so so long as i don't have a notoriety pop up uh extending the investigation isn't the worst thing in the world so um i'll get rid of some of the staleness with continued painting i will extend the life of the lesson learnt until i can get my remaining two i may do that uh you know through reading the collections of essays i'd prefer to keep at least three i think one lesson learnt isn't that hard to get but if i can keep two or three it would be nice but we'll see where that goes um, for now, though, I think let's just focus on the books that I can read. So we did trans, uh, translate the Orchid Transfigurations, but we also have a few other um, English texts. So let's start with the Queens and the Rivers, particularly because I know <laughs> I, always, um, I always get the pronunciations wrong. Uh, the Queens of the Rivers, a surreal contemporary play by the enigmatic Monica Medina, in which the Queens of the Rivers are murdered one by one. Uh, overall, I think we're in a fairly good spot in terms of getting more uh, more people into the Church of the Bright Edge, which is the one we inherited from the previous playthrough, Lord Stab. Um, I still haven't made a decision yet in terms of whether or not I'm going to change it, but I think it would be kind of interesting to see whether or not I can train up assassins and then uh, switch over the um, sort of switch over the founding principle, because that would imply that uh, this priest legacy can actually give you a more powerful batch of followers. You'd sort of get two sets of um, of high level uh, followers. So we'll see. It's not a major consideration for me, but um, you know, it's kind of nice to learn new things about games which you've played for a while. Uh, the Queen of the Vistula is poisoned. The Queen of the Niper chokes on a fish hook. The Queen of the Tagus is burnt alive. All that I am is here. Magnificent work. I've created something both distinctive and beautiful. It will very likely enhance my reputation. Not the outcome we're necessarily looking for, but something we sort of accepted would happen. Now, we've got two fascination on the board, so this is something that I want to keep an eye on um, for the simple reason that now I'm at the point where normally I would be able to induct someone into the Church of the Bright Edge to get rid of uh, fascination in an emergency. Now I have two, which means that I'm going to get caught in the... If there's a season of visions that comes up, I'll get caught in it and I'm going to have to find a way to deal, um, you know, deal with the consequences. Um, it sh actually, that's maybe something I should take a quick look at and make sure that there isn't a, uh, <clears throat> there isn't an impending season of visions. I think it was a clear one. Yes, it was clear. Um, but with that in mind, like, I want to, I want to be a bit careful in terms of what I'm letting, uh, creep through. Um, okay. I don't have any passion, so the idea of doing another painting right now is sort of off the off the list. Now, I could run the risk and do another, um, basically do another sermon uh, with my appointment to a quiet parish. I, I will run the risk. Um, so in this case, I'll use reason. I'm not going to add a doctrine. Um, and in this case, I'm really just, it's gonna be 60 seconds to generate some funds, uh, possibly an erudition. And my hope is that the congregation finds my more uh, more academic style a little more sleepy. Because if I do get a fervor, there is the danger that I'll generate a notoriety. At which point, our whole effort to lie low is um, sort of breaks. The auctioneer's gavel bangs. My item has sold. Now I don't quite know where the second funds came from, but I'm not going to complain about it. Um, let's grab. Well, let's uh, sell the other collection of poetry, and then we can start grabbing some more books. This oddity is probably worth something, but it's hard to be sure. So it's always nice to have a little bit of extra cash kicking around when you have aura flams, because you never know that when you're going to get stuck in a bidding war. I spent definitely overspent on the collection of essays, but I also don't think it's going to be too big of a too big of a problem. 
Um, now, we're in a bit of a better spot as far as the membership is concerned. Uh, maybe that I want to just use the talk verb to... Excuse me, just taking a quick sip of refreshment. It may be that I want to switch my efforts into uh, bringing these acquaintances in as believers. But um, I'm going to try one more time. If I recall correctly, we should have Cat Caro as a lantern follower. And then we should have Valsine as a forge follower. And then I believe that will cover the... Um, I believe that would cover the, the full ranking. So yeah, we would want to talk. Um, we would want to talk about the Watchman's secret a couple more times. Talking publicly about the invisible arts will attract attention. Perhaps that's what I want. The other effort for me is I would like to read as many books that will generate erudition as I can. I never like. I'm really bad at remembering which books do uh, do what things, but um, in this case here, like, I, I, there's always a benefit to reading stuff. So um, much like life. Uh, so I'm going to, well, that's not true, actually. I guess part of life is figuring out which books to read. Um, because I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it's possible to read them all. Um, but, uh, but yeah, in this case here, we can, um, we could, um, read the, uh, we'll, we'll read what we have available to us. And the things that take longer to study, uh, I'll put it sort of on the back burner. So in this case, we'll read the Six Letters on Necessity, The Orchid Transfigurations, Volume 1 and 2, The Feast and the Birth, uh, De Oris, Book 1, and then I'll crack open Kerner and Goethe and uh, translate on what is contained by Silver, and the true and complete accounting of the Asclepian mysteries of the roots of the house. In the meantime, uh, let's go back to the White Door. So, in my dreams I passed the white door, which has been called the bone door and the gate of ivory. My voice remains outside the house each time I enter. In my dreams I know the path to the white door through the bounds, but that path is thronged with the dead who pass that way. I will need health to resist their chill. Now I can approach the white door through the bounds. Now I can press my fingers to it, feel its chill, watch it swing open. As it opens, my mouth closes, tightens, heals over like a lost deformity. Around and about me is the cobalt light of the mansus. Okay, a bit more money for my poetry. So now we're going to be a buyer at Oriflames. I've got, in terms of disposable income, if I want to keep sort of five as my reserve, there may be a little bit of noise as I adjust my mic stand. My apologies. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so my reserve is normally five funds. So in practice, this really means I only have two to mess around with for each uh, purchase. But again, that's a flexible guideline. Part of the five is to be able to sort of act as a buffer for, for the, uh, you know, some of the more extravagant purchases, let's say. So, um, but I do want to keep buying books. So let's go, go back. We perch on alarming reet belt chairs in a windowless auction room with vividly burnt orange walls, waiting for the auctioneer to announce what he's offering. The reek of new paint makes the brain spin. And the Queens of the Rivers. The culprit, it transpires, is the audience. The surviving queens are directed to execute whatever audience members do not escape. A surprisingly lucid epilogue suggests that the correspondences of river names with historical events does provide uh, clues to secret histories behind our own. So we don't exactly need more occult scraps, but uh, anything that we have left over we'll be able to study and, uh, and move up. Obviously studying is more time consuming than uh, obtaining them through the Mansus, so that's a, a secondary consideration, but it is an option I have available to me. All right, the six letters on necessity, warnings and confessions about the cost of the invisible arts addressed to a student by the 17th century magus and reputed immortal Julian Cosley. Cosley's tone is urgent, as if he's suspected he may have little time left. And as a reminder, in the previous uh, episodes, you will be able to to see an encounter with Julian Cosley. He does show up every once in a while. A crowd of pinch faces, glinting eyes. Who will bid? All right, so this is a, this is a neat one. I always found Stoom to be a really interesting, um, really interesting, uh, uh, like a, a book. It, I, I like the idea of it. A kind of nitrate film labeled Stoom. Silent or perhaps mute, the director's name, Yernit Krasa, is shakily appended. It is one of the more expensive ones. You have to buy a projector to be able to uh, display it, but 
sometimes. Okay, so this is a bit dangerous to us. The congregation listens closely. I have shared no secret doctrine today. Sometimes my words and those I have borrowed move my congregation beyond mere concentration to exaltation. So... I want to make a decision with the lesson learned. I've got 30 seconds to... Well, here's what we're going to do. Um... Let me just double check. Yes, it is a season of despair. So let's um, grab some passion. Now we're going to go full passion on this. You never know. This might be a living. So the risk I'm running here is that we generate some notoriety. But this is going to generate some reserve mystique. And I get to extend the, uh, the erudition as well. Given that we have 53 seconds... Well, 53 minus the 15... <clears throat> we'll at least have sort of an idea of the, the contours of the, the problem. Okay, we're not paying on paints because I don't expect it to I don't expect it to um, sell that well. And the auctioneer makes a note of my name and signals one of my attendants. I have my prize. I hope it's worth it. So that didn't really cost us that much. Let's go back and uh, see what we can find at Oriflames again. Crowd of pinch faces, glinting eyes, who will bid? In Latin, an 18th century epic poem by the pseudonymous Solipstos. So that's De Bellis Mirorum. Particularly interesting to us because, of course, higher level edge will mean that we can potentially uh, raise our, our followers even higher. But let's see the consequences. Yes, okay, so we got a notoriety. This is actually a really bad time for this notoriety to show up because we're really, really short on the mystique. But we have options. So our de devotion has drawn comment. Now, the other thing that's worth remembering, too, is that it's a little less dangerous for me. I do have the ability to get things like a favor from authority, and I can potentially hire some people to get rid of the um, the evidence. So it's le overall, it is less dangerous than it, it's been in the past. Um, but let's let's see if we can get clever and and give the uh, give the suppression bureau the slip. So first thing we want to think about is how do we um, how do we make sure that we're able to, um, how do we make, how do we make sure that we're able to dodge the, um, or have the notoriety last long enough to, um, to expire? Or alternatively, how do we get rid of the notoriety using our, um, our heart followers? I have some ideas about how to do that, but, um, for now, let's go to the Lodge of the Sage Knight. Oh, nice. So the fact of the matter is, I don't think this is going to be too useful for us. Um, I've learned something that will earn me a favor once only. So because it only lasts 300 seconds, the likelihood of us getting damning evidence is going to be a... That's going to be pretty remote. We'd have to really mess up uh, to do that. And it is, so far as I can tell, never guaranteed. It says cannot be relied upon. I had always thought that that meant 300 seconds, but I believe that it is a chance to get your um, to get your follower off the hook. I don't believe that it is ever uh, something you can rely. Well, as it says, you can't rely on. I don't believe I don't believe that it is guaranteed that you will um, you will uh, you'll give them the slip. So, last night I dreamt of a blue silk pavilion overlooking the cloudy labyrinth of the bounds. I listened to the mistress of this place speak of other visitors. The suppression bureau comes here. Do you know that? I think they hope to recruit me as an ally. She snorts derisively. After what they tried to do to Christopher, but their folly is your fortune. I will tell you something that may help you if the Bureau ever troubles you. All right, so we're gonna, I think we'll go back to the white door. I don't see too much of a problem uh, heading back there, but I do wanna be a little more mindful of what's happening in the, uh, with the suppression Bureau and with my painting and such. And we do have a season of visions coming up, so I want to keep an eye out for what I'm going to do with my talk verb. 42 seconds left means this fascination is a liability, which means I want to try and bring someone into the into the fold. Okay, so I got my other erudition. This was good. Um, it means that I can read the other collection of essays. In this case, I think I'll just study my reason. No reason to get too, uh, too fancy about it, particularly because this lesson learned is starting to get a little stale, so... Even the sun can be divided, though it require the forge of days for its division. So here we have a smith's secret. 
In five continents, smiths have whispered the same words to the iron. Murderers have been known to whisper these words too, and adepts, of course. These words are spoken in ritual to inspire an unmerciful change. Okay, so we will study with the re with reason, so read whatever is to hand. The world, world is awash with printed words. Even the newspapers contain knowledge sometimes. The reason I'm doing this is that we've got a lesson learned right now, so this will take 60 seconds. I can uh, use this erudition. I can combine this into a lesson learned, and then finally I can read this collection of essays to give me three lessons learned. That's going to give me enough uh, enough erudition lessons learned to level up my notable scholarship and it means that I am three lessons learned from my essays up on the four that will be required to get the highest level so it's you know a, it's a bit of an elaborate way to pull it off but in this case here I think it's worth holding off the um, I think it's worth holding off the reading uh, to um, to just sort of lock in this game that I've got I know I can't paint forever so Okay, my recent work is considered significant. I may yet earn a living from this, but nothing is certain. So let's see the state of play. All right, so that's another fascination. That, unfortunately, is going to... That's going to wreck my um, my escape plan for the... Uh, for the... Um, uh, for the fascination. We are going to get hit by one of those, although... Um, it should only be one. Now, the good news is we do have a bit of mystique to sort of help me get off the hook. I'll get one passion back in 25 seconds, and we did get rid of our... Uh, our um, we did get rid of our staleness, so if I want, I can do a more reputation-based painting. But let's... I'm, I'm going to do something a little... Maybe a little counterintuitive here. So one of the drawbacks is if I keep painting um, with the notoriety and the mystique, it means eventually we're going to run out of mystique. I actually need a little while to accumulate a bit more mystique. So I'm going to paint, but I'm going to paint with the sort of the last second available uh, from the Suppression Bureau. Oh, I forgot to check the... I didn't even see what the, the offering was. That's my bad. I could, of course, you know, reset and get the get the card, but you should commit to our, our errors. Okay, so we're going to keep some mystique here. I'm going to try and keep the prime stuff. We'll put the erudition lesson learnt in. So again, we can't do this forever. Okay, that's good. They took the expiring one. And this is a collection of poetry, so I don't need to worry worry about that too much. So again, this is more of a holding um, maneuver rather than something more long-lived. Oh, excellent. Okay, so um, I have a spare air edition, but that's not uh, that's not actually a bad thing. So an acquaintance, come with me. We've got an extra mystique for our trouble, and we've got Cat Caro. Okay, so one option that I have would be to use my talk verb to use one of the heart followers to try and help our reputation. But again, for the same reason that we think we can delay the Suppression Bureau, I, um, I want to make sure that I'm, um, you know, the, the likelihood of, of one of them picking it up is, uh, you know, less, less than what I would want to rely on. And then more importantly, because they're only a two level heart, it's entirely possible that they will, they'll mess up the job. So what I'm going to do is an alternative. First thing I need to take care of is this fascination. So basically, in 36 sec, this would expire in 36 seconds. We're going to get hit by the season of visions in 5.7. But there's a couple things working to my advantage. In 5.6 seconds, we're going to get a fleeting reminiscence. I'm going to combine. I'm going to use this fascination uh, when inducting someone into the Church of the Bright Edge. So we start by getting hit with this 36 second uh, fascination. Doesn't actually matter which one of these I use in the talk for, but generally I like to use the, if you build the habit of using the fresher one, um, when it matters, it's going to be a reflex as opposed to something that you want to keep in mind. So actually let's lock this in now. So we'll take the Church of the Bright Edge. Um, I think we've got a representative from each, um, sort of each, uh, each principle. Yep. 
So I think it, one is obligated to add Neville if, if he's not already in the cult. So Neville. Neville pauses before he speaks and flinches easily. He laughs whenever he thinks you've made a joke. So let's do our uh, edge ceremony here. We will use the fascination as an input. This one is ready. So in 30 seconds, we will uh, we'll have one fascination gone, and then we'll use this fascination. Sorry, we'll get rid of this fascination through the fleeting reminiscence in about a minute and 10 seconds. Uh, this one I think we can afford to pay for the paint. Okay, another season of suspicion, so that's kind of the same as having a free day for us. And as tempting as it is to take the restlessness, let's actually... There is the danger that there's another fascination that gets picked up. So yes, I can paint this away. Some dead are lost in the wood, some rise higher, but many, so many, pass the white door into the house and become silent forever. Last night they thronged the entrance, our mouths were healed wounds, their eyes roamed my skin, their hands sought my warmth, but my touch burnt and they drew back, their urgency infected me. The restless longing has me, I feel I want to do something. What exactly? All right, as always, we'll head back to, uh, we'll head back to the white door. Here we've got the course of the heart. This is just because of uh, my use of the vitality. Whenever the principle of heart is implicated, I may gain vitality. And we let the book of poetry go by. This is Kerner and Goetz, so we don't need to worry about that one. Good work. This is work I can be proud of. With enough publicity, it will sell. The words contain knowledge, and now I contain it. It is a little like theft, and a little like feasting, and a little like the progress of an infectious disease. So let's just double up the air edition that I have right now. The last step will be to um, open the collection of essays, and then we should be good. Dusty facts have come clear in my brain, for now at least. Before they speak the words, the novice must sharpen a knife so it can separate a drifting thread, and it be not sharp enough, it will be the worse for them. Neville pauses before he speaks and flinches easily. He's sensitive to deeper matters. Okay. So recent work is considered notable. I am going to take a quick second here just to make sure that I've got the timings right, but glimmering, which I'm not really going to use. Uh, this, this mystique was uh, something that I... something that I already had. Uh, no staleness, which is nice, and we made some decent cash. Okay, so I have a couple of ideas about how I'm going to do this painting. I'm going to wait the four-ish second. Actually, I might even wait longer. Um, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So let's think about the talk verb. I think I'm going to still want to generate mystique, so we'll use the Watchman's Secret. We'll talk of esoteric matters. We're going to keep the uh, work verb open for, oh, sorry, for 12 seconds. Nope, that's fine. Oh, yeah, sorry, I wanted to work out the timing on this. So 57 seconds, uh, a minute for the collection of essay. Yes, so we'll be just getting under the wire, but we should be fine with the study verb. So again, I want to be careful on the timing here, but I am going to do a painting. So here I'm just trying to get a little bit of mileage out of the the expiry for the notoriety. So we're going to take this open soul. Now I'm going to do something a little unusual here. So we're going to take the passion. I am going to take this notoriety. So the drawback to this is that all of my, my my mystique is going to be ticking down for about a minute, and this notoriety is going to be preserved for a minute. But my hope is because I'm using a bunch of passion, this will be something that will generate a lot of mystique to sort of cloud the um, kind of cloud the investigation a bit. So uh, part of the I guess part of the idea here is if it was. Um, if I was a writer instead of a painter, sorry to bring up writing again. Um, you know, this is the this is the response of of like a, a squid, a spurting ink to to confuse my predator um, or confuse a predator. Right, it was Kerner and Goethe. I was fine with that. Um, 
In this case, I guess I'm I'm squirting paint to to evade. Okay, another book of poetry. So I do the one thing I wish I I don't mind uh, losing losing the book to carelessness because that's kind of just how this game works. But I always wonder what book I missed, <laughs> um, and the the not knowing is gonna gonna bug me. Okay, uh, if I wanted Dread, we could do an icy atmosphere. We did just pick up the fleeting reminiscence, so now it's safe to go to the Orchard of Lights and the Lodge of the Sage Knight. I'll go to the Lodge of the Sage Knight again. And we got lucky. We got another air edition. So it's going to take a little while. I'm going to have to do some fancy footwork to make this all work. But I'm thinking we're in a good place. I think we might actually be able to move up to the next level of, uh, of knowledge. That is after the one that we've got. I think we have the materials that we need to be able to get our, our next level pretty quickly. So, In last night's dream, I was in the lodge of the Sage Knight behind the white door. It is difficult to remember exactly how I came there, and the mistress of this place, the woman with the dark glasses, was nodding as if I had asked her a difficult question. Of course I hadn't. I lost my speech when I passed the white door. How is it that I can speak, she said to me. I didn't come here through the white door. I'm not proud of what I did to come here, so let me tell you about something else. Okay, um, I think we're just going to do the same routine. The f one thing that's funny here is that for all of the all of the trips that we've been making through the White Door, we don't actually have any of the higher level secret histories yet. But sometimes that's just a function of uh, of um, persistence. Uh, it's not um, it's not at the point where I want to be sort of shaking my fist to the heavens at the uh, you know at the unfairness of it all. The world goes away. Let's see what we have at Oriflam's. I want to be pretty careful about the timings here. Actually, so, I mean, I don't need to worry about the Book of Essays. I, well, no, what I'll do is I'll open the Book of Essays here because I actually have some time left on this air edition. Um, admittedly, not a lot of it. But exercise for the intellect. Be, I gotta be a little careful, but I think we'll be fine. Gilder sleeves. All right, I've created something distinctive and beautiful. It will very likely enhance my reputation. All right, so this is a little earlier than I wanted it to be, but let's just see how much I picked up. So I'm not worried about this fascination during the season of visions because the fleeting reminiscence was picked up, which means it's going to go away no matter what. Uh, look, I'll be honest, I would like a little bit more mystique, but I think at one point, at some point, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to, um, face the music, so. Let's see. Let's see what happens, and perhaps ill-advisedly, I'm going to conduct another service. Okay. I mean, the longer I delay it, the more likely the favor from authority goes away, but we're not going to use the favor from authority for a tentative evidence. We're going to use it for something a little more, um, a little more stern. If I have a particular in uh, friend, now is the time to renew our connection. We've got a season of ambitions coming up, so that's going to give me something that I want to paint. And we have something, something, deep mystery, something. Okay, so we've also exhausted Oriflams, which means the only place we're going to be getting uh, further books will be by going on expeditions. And the other bit of good news here is that, well, not good news, but uh, the other bit of news that means that we're sort of shifting on to the next sort of phase of our progress is that we've got what we needed for our higher level of reason. Now, you don't need to have max everything to start going on expeditions, but it does make it a little bit more convenient just because you're not, um, your attention isn't sort of spent on, on other factors. So in this case here, we're really just gonna keep adding some more, <coughs> more believers to the, um, excuse me, uh, to the Church of the Bright Edge and uh, we'll start going uh, going to the different expeditions. Of course, this does generate notoriety, so I'd like to have a slightly more reliable pipeline in terms of getting rid of um, 
uh, getting a rid of notoriety or at least more reliably generating mystique. But those are some, you know, those are things that we can worry about as uh, as time goes by. I think the time has come for us to um, to start following up on some of these expeditions. Also, uh, we're going to be short a member because we're looking for a mentor. Uh, all right, let's try the Lodge of the Sage Knight again. A subtle fracture. Clouds part, walls creak, old wounds ache. Last night in the Great Pavilion, beyond uh, above the grace ball of the bounds, a woman uh, who once called herself Teresa Gallimer sat on a gilt, on gilt fringe could <laughs> Sorry, let me try that again. Last night, in the great pavilion above the gray sprawl of the bounds, a woman who once called herself Teresa Gallimer sat on gilt-fringed cushions and offered me a horn cup of dream wine. The wine is imaginary, she explained, but the cup is not. To navigate the mansus, one must understand the distinction. Perhaps one day you'll join me on the pilgrimage, or I'll join you. So here, let us share a secret. And her breath tickled my ear. Okay. I'm getting a little bit close to... Well, I'm already at the half hour mark here, so I'm debating as to whether or not I want to do the... I think we'll move our uh, reason up in the next episode. We'll probably leave it here. So um, I don't know. I didn't have a particular goal for where we were going to be finishing uh, tonight, but I'm feeling, other than the notoriety, which is unlucky, but I knew that when I was doing the sermon. You know, I, I really... I took the chance. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I wanted to make sure that my funds were intact. And in this case, there's a minor inconvenience for me to deal with, but we're basically going to deal with it the way that we always do. Um, we've So far, the strategy has worked well for us. Um, it may, at some, I mean, just through the number of times that we're going to do it, eventually this is going to fall apart and eventually I'm going to have to deal with some some notoriety. But it is kind of funny. I mean, it it's nice. I never do these things intentionally, but it, there is something kind of neat about being sort of secreted away to, a, you know, to a parish um, to sort of cover up, you know, some indiscretion. Um, it's never really suggested exactly what that is in the game. And I mean, obviously, that's where you fill in the blanks as the player. But it is kind of neat that I've definitely been contending with uh, suspicion uh, as a result of some of my activities quite a bit more than maybe I have in other playthroughs. You know, you never, at least for me, I never sort of planned this out, but I am kind of, I'm, I'm intrigued by the fact that this is how, how the story's turned out. So it just winds up giving me a little bit of a world that's happening in my head as I, as I play the game. But one way or the other, um, because we are, um, you know, at this point, we really don't have an option but to to get our highest level of of reason. Um, our focus can definitely transition towards uh, the activities that would be related to sort of uh, looting some vaults and and otherwise advancing our uh, our knowledge of the uh, the secrets beneath the skin of the world. And um, there will be a little bit of tidying up to do on tomorrow's episode. But uh, after that, um, you know, we'll we'll swell the ranks. We'll turn these acquaintances into believers and then we'll start throwing them at uh, the vaults as they come up and we'll try and work out a slightly better way of handling the um, the reputation that comes as a result but that's going to be for another episode thank you very much for watching as always and uh, if you've not done so already please consider subscribing to the channel you can get the notifications if you hit the bell as well and of course uh, the comments and the likes um, definitely help the videos get noticed the dislikes i guess let me know if you didn't care for it but uh, thank you for sticking around half an hour if you if you didn't like it. Um, and uh, as always, I, I know I was a little late in responding to some of the comments from last week, but I do read them all and I, I appreciate them very much. So I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great evening.